This video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. While this guitar is definitely not for me, that doesn't mean that it's bad. Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. This is the Sterling by Music Man John Petrucci Majesty X Demarzio. I think that's the full name. It's the 2020 edition, and although I've never played a Sterling Majesty before, from what I understand, this is the best and most feature-packed version yet. This is the first time having a Sterling on the channel. Really excited? Let's take a closer look. So this guitar is really sleek, much like today's sponsor, the Ridge Wallet. Pro YouTuber Segway. It's designed to be slim, minimalistic, unlike most wallets, it fits nicely into your front pocket. It's basically two metal plates bound by a durable elastic band, and I mean, I'm gonna keep using the word, it's so sleek, it's RFID blocking, it's a wallet built for 2020, backed by a lifetime warranty. You can carry up to 12 cards plus cash. It comes in aluminum, titanium, or carbon fiber in a variety of styles. I went with black titanium because metal. Since I've been using it, it's actually surprising just how nice it is to not have to carry around a bulky wallet. Like for such a small change, it's surprisingly freeing. So I love it. I'm never going back. I think you'll love it too. Head on over to ridge.com slash agarfish and use code agarfish for 10% off. Link in the description. Again, that's ridge.com slash agarfish code agarfish. Alright, so thanks to the sponsor and the patrons for allowing me to do what I do. And now let's get into the review. So I always try to be upfront about my opinions, what aspects I value, and my overall taste and guitars that way when you watch one of my reviews you know where I'm coming from and can kind of calibrate what I say to your own taste because while this guitar is definitely not for me that doesn't mean that it's bad also I know you guys have been waiting a long time for this one and I'm sorry it's taking so long right, so right when I unboxed it and I kind of don't like starting on this point because it seems a little petty but we're talking about a $1,400 guitar and I feel like it should look just as nice as the one that's on the website and honestly it just doesn't. The one on the website is a nice, deep, royal purple. It's got kind of like a black burst purple thing going on, where the outside is super dark. In real life, this is very different. It is purple, I'll admit the figuring of the veneer is really nice, especially on the smaller horn side. It's got nice, dark, wide stripes. Not as nice on the other side, but you know, whatever. But the color, man, it's nowhere close. The purple is really light and washed out. It's almost pink. 
but not a nice pink. The outside is like a light purple. It's definitely not black. Let's just put it this way. To me, the one on the website looks like a high-end guitar. In person, you can tell this is the more affordable model and that's disappointing. So the color's a little disappointing. That being said, it is purple. The world needs more purple guitars, so that's a plus. In addition to purple, it also comes in red. There is a seven string version as well for hundred bucks more. That also comes in red. In terms of specs, we're looking at a mahogany body, a set three piece mahogany neck, and an ebony fingerboard. So fairly traditional woods, nothing super out of the ordinary here. The body shape's kind of interesting. I like how it sort of matches the inlays. I'm still kind of getting used to the shape, but the body and the headstock look kind of small. The headstock especially is like a baby fender, but the four x two design actually works. It's not too cramped. Like the tuning keys actually have plenty of room and you don't need string trees or anything like that. This small, thin body means it is pretty light. There's such a huge length discrepancy between the two horns. It looks kind of goofy to me, but to its credit, it does provide for great upper fret access to all 24 frets. And that's what I'd heard most about Music Man guitars. Music Men? And their affordable Sterling line is just how effortless they are to play. And I mean, overall, um, yeah, it's real good, but it's not like mind-blowing. In terms of how the neck feels, it's essentially identical to my Axion label RGA 61 AL. And I'm not terribly versed in Ibanez guitars because I'm new to that world and don't love the way that they feel either. But if you played one of the modern made in Indonesia Ibanez guitars, Ibanai, like the RGs or the RGAs, that's pretty much how this neck feels. Same thickness or rather thinness, same profile. So it's got kind of a flat-ish back very flat 16 inch radius fingerboard. At this point, I'm pretty sure Sterling just sent me the wrong guitar because I'm pretty open about not liking any of that. But we move. The fingerboard has been slightly rounded, but not to the extent you'd find on like a Chapman V2 or even a Harley Benton Amarok. So you can definitely tell it's a new guitar and it doesn't feel played in yet. So I accidentally did an unscripted, unintentional toughness test on the Sterling Majesty. I had it on the stand while I was working on the review and Pringle knocked it over. It went crashing headstock first right into the floor. So now there is some fairly noticeable damage to the finish and a pretty ugly ding on the headstock. You may have noticed that already on the demo playthrough footage, but other than that, that's it. So there you go, headstock didn't completely crack off, no major wood damage, one and a half thumbs up, more durable than a Les Paul. Damage? Um, I don't know what you're talking about. This is premature relicking. What? No! So I'm not huge into the super shreddy feel of the guitar, but I do like the feature set. The Sterling locking tuners feel good. The nut, I think it's Graf Tech. It's very well cut, no issues. Comes with a nice, well padded gig bag. At 1400 bucks, if it didn't come with a gig bag, that'd be an issue. The trem feels solid. I like how it's both vintage looking and modern sleek at the same time, the way it's recessed into the body. I'm still not sure about the tiny pickup selector, or the little <laughs> circus tent control knobs, but I guess they are unique and give this guitar more personality. Plus I'm one of those bridge pickup tone all the way open 95% of the time guitars anyway, so I don't really use them. What's cool though is that the volume pot is push push for an extra boost. So if you're about to rip into a lead and leave the rest of the band in your dust, push that down and shred away my friend. <laughs> And I like the thought that went into that, like the push-push style makes more sense than a push-pull to quickly engage the boost on the fly. For pickups, we're looking at Petrucci's signature DiMarzio set, a crunch lab in the bridge, and a liquefier in the neck. Apparently, this is the first time that the Sterling models have featured proper DiMarzios, so that's a big step up for this model. Here's what everything sounds like running through the dual wreck.
So the bridge is pretty balanced and very crunchy. That's the best way to describe it, crunchy. The name doesn't disappoint. Now, I think what's happened here is I've overhyped this guitar for myself. Music Man and Sterling are making huge waves, especially in the online community. John Petrucci, obviously, he's the man. And I was so pumped when they reached out and they were like, hey, do you want to take a look at this? And I was like, f yeah, absolutely. I talked to Andrew Baina about the Majesty. He did a video on it. He loved it. I was 100% on the hype train right up until I took it out of the box. It's not spectacular. It's not unspectacular. It's fine. In 2020, there are no bad guitars from any of the big manufacturers. They're just varying levels of good and a whole slew of different spec options out there that either appeal to your preferences or don't. This Majesty, I really just don't vibe with it. It's not a bad guitar at all. I just don't like the fingerboard and the profile. And let's not ignore the fact, yes, this is the more affordable model. Music Man Majesty runs north of $4,000, but still 1400 bucks is a lot for this guitar. And I get it. There are some cool lines on the spec list. You've got stainless steel frets, DiMarzio pickups, but the hardware isn't name brand and that should have saved some money. Originally, I thought it was because it was made in Korea and manufacturing in South Korea is getting more and more expensive. I actually visited the factory that did sterling in Korea a few years back. Uh, it was really clean, it was really professional, really impressive. But it turns out this guitar is made in Indonesia. And that's by no means a knock against Indonesian made guitars. I'm just saying it's objectively cheaper to make guitars there versus South Korea. It's the little things. The pickup routes aren't the cleanest. The pickup coil tape, I'm not sure what the technical term is, isn't that well done. The fretwork is decent for the most part. They're smooth, they're level, stainless steel frets are always nice but the 24th fret might not be fully centered and kind of doesn't reach the fingerboard edge. And it's something that I haven't seen and forgiven before on this channel. I do tend to focus on the import lines, <laughs> the guitars that I can afford. But what I'm saying is that these are the same things you'd find on guitars priced 800 to 1000 and this is uh, slightly more expensive. The build quality is really good, but 1400 bucks gets you an American PRS S2 and it's not even close between the two. So in my opinion, this might be priced slightly higher than it should be. But again, I don't really bond with the neck. If I was a big fan of how it felt to play, maybe I'd be more inclined to agree with that price point. So yeah, as a diehard fan of Les Pauls and the modern inspired takes on the single cut, those are my thoughts on this majesty. The color is disappointing and the specs aren't for me, but for all the reasons I listed as to why I don't like it, they might be the same reasons as to why you might. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button. These are of course just my opinions. I'd love to know what you think. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't already. That way YouTube lets you know when I upload a new video. Thanks to Sterling for being brave enough to send this guitar out for the review. Uh, I'm sorry, I just couldn't bond with it. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description as always. Thanks so much for watching. You've been awesome and I'll see you for the next video.